Hey everybody, it's Mike. It's episode 84. And what are we talking about today, Katie? Today it is Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and dad movies. On this week's episode of Cup of Rad. Hey everybody, that's right, we're back at you. It's Indiana June. We're barreling on down the road with this episode of Cup of Red. It's already the third episode in June. It is. Time is flying! Right? Only (gasps) one more episode. So crazy. So on sad note, though, Joel Schumacher had passed away. Yeah. Uh, Better known for Lost Boys, 8mm, and the Batman movies. Yeah, all I know him for is for the Batman movies. Just... It was interesting. I was reading an article today about it, and he was saying that he takes full responsibility for how it went because apparently he was under a lot of pressure um, from the studio to familify it, toy it, toyify it. I'm not and surprised at all. He uh, said he was his original want was to do year one. He was a big fan of Frank Miller's year one. Hmm. And, you know, when you think about it, how dark a lot of his movies are, you know, it, it was kind of odd to have such a comic so book. So, so it color, shows, right? you know, that that it was. Yeah, because if you say Lost Boys, I'm like, what? Those are the same people that made those movies? What? <laughs> mm-hmm. Quintessential teenage vampire movie. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, so that, that, you know, but he was 80. I didn't realize he was 80 years old. So. Well, yeah, and he went battling cancer for last year. Yeah. So, so. Which is unfortunate for sure. But. Yeah. Sad news. So this last weekend was Father's Day. It was. Uh, hopefully, if you are a father, uh, you uh, had a good one. Or if you have a father, you had a good one. Or you know what? I just hope you had a good weekend. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Hope you all had a good one. <laughs> it shows my awkwardness with the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, uh, he's uh, only been, you know, celebrating it for many years. But hey, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's still awkward, though. I know. I understand. I don't know, really celebrate the day prior to not as son. a child. You didn't no, celebrate no, it. So, so that's yeah, it's, it's like weird. ingrained in me for decades. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. So, but speaking of cool father things, things, I'm on use a Batman tie in. Um, I had gotten a few weeks back from toy traders, uh, the Riddler from Batman forever tied back to Joe Schumacher. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I love the pop. It was fantastic. Just the detail. Cause I love that version. Um, in the suit with all the question marks and the green and all that, it's just fantastic to see, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's what I want to see if they ever bring a mask. I want I want like the this the the question mark suit. Yes. Um, I hope they never do the Riddler version that's in the Harley Quinn cartoon. I was just gonna say you don't want the Harley Quinn uh, cartoon. You know what? It's that weird. It's like the, the tattoos. The calves. The, well, calves wouldn't be bad, but the tattooed the tattoo on his forehead. Face. Yeah. I'm not yeah. a big fan of that version of the Riddler. Yeah. Um, and he's been in comics and stuff like that, too. Oh, right? yeah. So it's, yeah. So it's like a weird. Yeah, no, like, I don't like it. Um, but uh, so anyways, I, I regretted not getting the penguin when we were there. And you and kiddo surprised me with the kiddo of the kiddo with the kiddo. I went to Toy Traders because um, I had, you know, I was like, well, this is perfect. I had a couple hours to spare there. And so I, uh, I figured I had to go there and find some some extra father's day stuff for you and uh yeah the penguin funko pop yeah it was it's an awesome sculpt and i love the shadowing on it with the eyes yeah and the face is a shape face it's really well done like it looks just like him mm-hmm. and uh yeah it was just too good to pass up so yeah so i have that there i can add to my little batman shelf because i got a lot of the animated ones and they never did a riddler and they never did a penguin from the animated series so at yeah, least it kind of like ties into the shelf with all those so that was pretty awesome um but yeah i had some news that i was going to talk about but i can't remember it i got uh kiddo's uh kumon pokemon funko Pop. oh yeah, yeah yeah that one is pretty adorable yeah they brought out the next wave of pokemon which was yeah. pretty pretty you know it's coming out fast and furious now yeah four at a time <gasps> excellent news i'm so excited my <laughs> captain marvel hot toy is shipping soon <laughs> i have i actually got the notice saying that it's arriving in their warehouse shortly and it will be shipping. And I'm so freaking excited. It's been so long. Man, it's been over a year. So long. The movie's been out for two years. It was two years ago from March, wasn't it? No. It was only a year? Really? It's been that. It felt like forever. I guess it's only been a year then. Yeah. But the la- the pay- the last time it was, it was supposed to ship in the fall last year. Yeah, it was, supposed to, it was supposed to be like, it was so, supposed to be for Christmas. Yeah. 
and uh, it was not. No, it feels like it's been that long. Then apparently, apparently, well, I it's have been a year been and a half since the fact, you... the fact that uh, you know the last few months have felt like a year. So maybe that's the problem. <laughs> it's been eighty-four years. <laughs> Either way, I'm excited. I've never had to wait like this for something. <laughs> Patience is gone. <laughs> well, you know what? You'll randomly think of the news that you had to share. I know the you also more Batman stuff was Keaton. News oh yeah, yeah. That. Keaton's apparently in talks to be in the Flashpoint movie. Um, like for a while, they were talking about Jeffrey Dean Morgan was going to be in it, and that's kind of disappeared. Now Keaton's in it, so uh, I hope he's not playing Thomas Wayne. I hope he's actually playing eighty nine right. Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're talking about it's going to open up the whole multiverse. You know, is it really going to be him playing it, or is there going to be like him casually in the bat chair as, Looking as Flash runs by it? <laughs> I don't trust DC to not just do that. Be like, oh yeah, Keaton was totally in it and reprised no, his role the, as Batman the rumor, for five seconds the, the, as the Flash ran by. The rumor is the <laughs> the rumors are that he's going to be possibly coming in as a mentor role, mm. um, and working within the world of it as a possibility of like it, it sounds basically like they like saw how fast how fast how popular uh into the spider verse was mm. and they're like what if we do, we do this? into the bad verse <laughs> right like that's honestly what's probably going to happen is and you know it's going to be more of that kind of kind of dealio Okay. Um, I don't know. We'll see we'll, until until it's actually until a it's, trailer yeah. has hit and it says it's going to come out. In you theaters. know what? Until it's out and I see how long he's actually in the movie, I will not believe them. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. We will see. Uh, there's lots of rumors swirling that it could be a solo flick after that or the, the fact that he might be playing more of like gathering a multiverse Justice League. Yeah. OK, so. Because they can't commit to one, so they have to just pick and choose. Hey, yeah. you know what? Whatever. <laughs> they can just find all the best ones. Well, fine. Anything can be better with than what they've given us right now. So, for a lot of things. Now, they, they, they did have the Jackson Snyder did toss out his little teaser of uh, his cut. Mm. And that was something that was never in the movie. Or you didn't watch it. Uh, I saw it and I forgot to watch it. Oh, okay. Uh, it's basically her with the torch. Fine. It's this old, old lady talking about basically dark side. Oh, okay. It's like old, like ruin with like what looks like dark side on it. Oh, wow. That's cool. I'm assuming there's going to be a bigger because in August, there's supposed to be like a giant DC fan expo mm. online. Oh, okay. You had to make up for Comic-Con not being there. Yeah. Right? So, and they're saying there's going to show something. So maybe we'll get an actual trailer uh, in August there. Yeah. So nice. yeah, but yeah, that's that's not a lot of a lot, yeah. lot going you know, on. It was weird. You know, speaking of trailers, um, I watched the uh, Kingsman Kingsman um, trailer, and I'm really excited about that. And it was a weird feeling though, reading it, being like only in September, only in theaters in September, and I'm like, hopefully. Yeah, right. It was a weird, like, not knowing, will I actually be able to go in theater? I'm still excited well, for it. Well, I'll right now, it, right now, like, honestly, we won't be able to because the three theaters that are in our area are all in Vancouver that are opening in July. True, and we're not going to go. So, so it's like, it's, it's just, it's just. At quarter weird. capacity. Yeah. Reservation like, quarter capacity in Vancouver. You're feeding an entire province. And you know what funny is you're going to be able, they're going to jack up the prices and people are still going to go. Uh, yeah. I can see that I happening. Know. Yeah. I guess we'll have to see. It'll be it'll become a privilege thing. It, I don't trust them not to. Yeah, I don't. It, I don't know. I don't want to be pessimistic about it, but it's like I really I'm excited about that because I'd be so awesome in big screen. Like I miss that concept. But I, I really think that a lot of the movies are shooting themselves in the foot, especially the ones that are hoping like with Mulan still has a, a July twenty. Yeah, I don't date. think the summer is happening at all. And sure. same with Tenant supposed to be coming out. And I, 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 as much as I want to feel that it's going to be all okay, I really think that they need to push those back. So especially with theaters having so much limitations on them, yeah, that it's going to make it hard. Is so you're going to get these movies like, oh look, that movie bombed. And it's and not going to be a realistic reflection of the movie of the time. Yeah, right? I think it's just the reality that it it's like okay, this can't be up and running in a safe capacity until we figure out a, a better overall immunity system yeah. going forward, and that's just the reality. So of it. they just but. need to place everything on its original dates. 
but in 2021 and push everything back. So we're just going to pretend 2020 didn't really exist right. and we're just going to wipe it away. <laughs> right. Because, yeah, I don't I don't think I don't. I don't yeah. I look at that and I think, well, I don't know. Will it, yeah. will it just get pushed back? Like, like how many have been pushed back? Um, so here's a fun thing. So so Universal dropped trolls mm-hmm. and then all the theater chains got their knickers in a bunch. Mm-hmm. Said they were never going to distribute a Universal movie ever again. Right. And uh, well, then Scoob did the same thing. No one's saying, hey, we're never going to do what you call them. The only difference was was because Warner Brothers made Scoob available for purchase the same day as. um, I still don't understand why that is like a make or break it thing. Right. I don't get it. So now SpongeBob has been delayed till 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, The new movie. Which I think looks gorgeous. The, the CG like an- textured animation that they got going for it. Mm. Um, but it's going to be a video on demand. Oh, okay. And it's also going to... Sounds like it won't actually get a physical release mm. or a digital release. Oh, wow. It's video on demand and then CBS on demand. Oh wow! So it's just always so, just me streaming. So this is going to be this is this is the beginning of the end. <laughs> this is like when it comes to discs and stuff like that, and where the streaming wars are going to start piecing it out. Like, yeah. well, even Scoob, Scoob's going directly to HBO Max. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a weird, weird world where you're going to see all this stuff go. This digital. just accelerated it. We knew it was coming at some point, but it was the Kickstarter that yeah. they needed to try something new. Yeah. Yeah. So hmm. weird things, right? Uh, so let's move on from the, the doom and gloom because yeah, wow, we sound depressed as fuck. Um, coffee, well, drinking coffee, rad coffee from Spent Grounds, the best coffee. <laughs> <laughs> if only we had a sponsorship. I know, right? I would still just you know whatever. So, uh, so we is Indiana June. Dun, 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 dun. Back to our Indiana Jones fiesta. Yes. Uh, Indiana Jones, the third one. The third one. Yeah, this one here, uh, The Last Crusade. It came out many, many, many years later. There was definitely a break in between because they were like, bang, bang. And then here came the third one. Uh, Now, the reason for that was that because Lucas and uh, Spielberg had a bit of a falling out. Yeah. uh, And what ended up happening is that Spielberg said, fine, I'll come and do it. And my contract. Oh, okay. That's that was his initial thought on the project was just get my contract done and over with. Uh and it ended up being his favorite of the series. That's really funny. Uh because he was able to in- inject more things that he wanted. The father story really wasn't there mm. as much in the original draft. Um and he was able to put that into it, and he added some more of his, you know, even the beginning was a bit more of him. Oh, okay. Uh, it seems like Lucas pulled back the reins a bit. Uh, even even Spielberg had, I, I like, think about all the stuff I was reading about, the stuff that went on, and how much Lucas allows Spielberg to have more freedom on it. And then I think about the fourth, and I remember hearing about how this was all George's story. I was just there for the ride. Mm. And so, like, it almost feels like, payback <laughs> the fourth was like well because like talk about like at one point they were supposed to be like more of a haunted mansion feel and oh, wow. like there was tons of stuff that lucas wanted but it came down to they decided to pick this story out of all the ideas that there was there it oh, was okay. more spielberg's kind of show mm-hmm. um so maybe that's also why it turned out to be his favorite yeah um, he, he probably has the best fondest memories of yeah all of right for it, yeah so, so that's one thing I thought was kind of interesting to mm-hmm. to read and then see and you know, then think about the fourth of how like it's so funny because I keep thinking this is the last one and then I was like no no they they had to bring it back. So, well, kiddo, kiddo went ahead and he was like he's like well why why does your pack here have say the complete s- series? I was like because that came out before the other one even was even a, they thought it was the radar never it was like yeah a possibility right? and he like he had the hardest time even like comprehending it it was the weirdest moment. <laughs> But so Last Crusade is basically the story of Indiana Jones finding out that his father is missing. Yeah. And goes on a journey, finding out that, guess who's back? The Nazis! Woo! You get to punch a Nazi in the face! 
Because we can't complain about punching a Nazi in the face. Right. Because right. that's the best thing you can do. So his, his dad has always been obsessed with the Holy Grail and all the mythology behind that. And that was his specialty. And so he was sent looking for it and apparently had found close clues and then disappeared. Yeah. And had been uh, kidnapped or something of that nature. They don't know. And it was like, well, you need to go find him because you'll be able to understand the clues that he had. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and it's all a trap. It's all a trap. I love when they show up at the church, though. And like, he, I like this one because you start. It, it's back to that first where he has the archaeological clues mm. to find, and yeah, I, the I enjoy that the hunt aspect. Yeah. And you know, looking for the different markers and solving the riddle and the puzzle, and I, I really enjoy this. Oh so yeah, this story that idea resonates with me. Well, I wasn't really looking forward to this one because I had seen it so much. But when we were watching, I was realizing it's actually a really fun movie. Yeah, I think just as, as a teenager, you get a little because it's the ultimate dad movie. Yes, it is so. literally the ultimate dad movie because it's like well, the still... absentee father dad movie. Yeah, and then he's like, like oh, that, you know, I've always been there dream, for you, yeah. and then like you know, and then he's kind of mocking him and joking with him still, and it's just like, yeah. oh my god, you know. Well, like, it's literally the 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 little boy's dream where your dad's gone, and then you hope that your dad's as cool as that, and ends yeah. up being like okay with who you are, right? Yeah. That that's the thing where it comes oh, yeah. down to. So, so then of course there's betrayal of the the woman. Yeah, I think it's hilarious that they they have that lovely joke in there multiple times of how they both apparently slept with her, and that was hilarious because it was so subtle. Like kiddo would never have known really what had happened mm-hmm. with that, um, but that was that was quite funny. Yeah, I got her second. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> But there's also too it was it was a throwback because you know of the James Bond aspect, right? Mm-hmm. With actually having James Bond play Indy's father. Yes, that is. So funny. it's like the full circle of it all. Uh, they they do a lot of things in there. They they give the reason why Indy has the scar on his chin. Yes, um, that whole beginning scene there yep. was quite funny. It's like, oh my gosh, it looks like. You know, he just co- he copied it. You said that there was a commentary there, but most likely that he even copied his look too. you know. He, oh, oh, because the bad so, guy that he's trying to get the stuff. from. Yeah. yeah. That, well, because I was reading in the original script uh, in the movie, he's just known as Fedora. Mm. Right. In the credits, it's just Fedora. Uh, in the original script prior to the shooting script, apparently it was actually Abner. Hmm. It was supposed to be Abner. Oh, okay. So that was going to be your first meeting that would of have made Ravenwood sense. there, right? Yeah. So, so the idea that it was then, then then you read that, you're like, well, then it makes more sense. Like, he idolizes him. Yeah, that right? would have because made Because then you know there's sense. the history, Because right? then, like, why are you, why were you stealing that from, from someone like that? You right? steal it, and then you're like, man, your look is boss. Yeah, you're like, I don't really want to be like you, but I want to look like you. Right. So, so I thought it was kind of funny. So we'll just go with the fact that his name's Abner, then. Right. We'll just roll with that. <laughs> Not just Fedora. You know, one thing that I, I always thought, and I still thought it would have been awesome is if because tom Selleck was supposed to play indiana jones mm. and then magnum pi it didn't allow him to be able to play it that was their first choice mm-hmm. um i wish they'd been able to get tom Selleck to play fedora yeah because that would have been funny yeah and then once you because you wouldn't have really known about it too much and they would have been like oh, later awesome. on it would have come oh, out and you're like yeah. oh yeah <laughs> yeah easter egg easter egg before you even knew what they were right <laughs> Uh, but you know, it's a lot of fun. Like it's just, it is still just that Pulp Fiction action yeah. adventure. You know, one thing that I thought was interesting was how much some of the effects didn't hold up as much as Raiders did, and Raiders was almost a whole ten years earlier mm. because Raiders didn't really rely on too much. Um, it was really at the end when they had effects. Like the yeah. effects weren't bad. Like it wasn't like it was more God. physical stuff. But, but there like, was a lot more shining lights and like well the like the airplanes like yeah. you can clearly see the, the green, the green screen, screen cut, cut off and things. all that. Like yeah. you can tell the age of the movie from yeah. it from those moments. Yeah. And well, when the tank goes off the the thing off the cliff, mm. and the the Nazi is all screaming and falling. Oh, that one was kiddo, so bad. Kiddo, kiddo's like that looked fake. Yeah, yeah, he called it out and was just like, no, instantly take you out of the the moment there for yeah. it. Yeah, I love, you know what's, I love the story of the Grail with that and all the different the different um, quests that they had to do, and I liked. 
the my, one of my favorite aspects of it is the choosing of the actual grail and it shows the difference between the person who understands the history of it and the person who just wants the greed of it. And we were expressing that to Kiddo for the fact of why the cup that Indy chooses is the correct one that makes so much more sense for the time period. You know, instead of thinking, what would the Grail look like if it was created now, given all of our history and their thoughts on on the Christianity about versus what it would have been at the time when Christianity wasn't really there. And, uh, and I I just, I love that, that concept for it. It shows the greed versus the scholar, right? Yeah, exactly. And and the humble person who can accept that it's, it's still important, even if it doesn't look all shiny and full of glitter and gold, right? right? It's still a cup and still the concept of the grail is what it was, Mm -hmm. not what it looked like. Yeah. And that's, you know, the, the, the important part of it, right? So well, I think we uh, we see the fact that you know we want the idea of the king of of everything the to have the kings. best of everything, right? Like, yeah. And but that then shows our shows the greed, right? Yeah, it's not. It shows what the materialistic. He stood for. And it'd only be worse now, like if it was like now going in there, yeah. you know, it would have to be like hydraulic lift and full bedazzled you know well yeah it, as i said yeah it. it doesn't it doesn't show for the man that jesus would have been at yeah. that time right so so yeah so i like that kiddo really his favorite favorite part was the leap of faith and mm-hmm. looking across the crevice and the fact that it was hidden uh which is just so awesome you think about that you know you look at it and you're like because i couldn't remember i've seen this movie so many times and i couldn't remember for life me i'm like i know they get across there yeah and i know it's not magical could I remember how they did it? No. So it was still like this really fun surprise. Like, oh yeah, it's an illusion. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so I, I told Kiddo, you know, it was good for him to get other knowledge about the Holy Grail, not just Monty Python. <laughs> so now he's got a more well-rounded <laughs> knowledge of the Holy Grail. <laughs> he just kind of looked at me like, whatever, mom. Because that's oh that's how God. that's how we go. You know, okay, but though I have done my job right. Speaking of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. He was with his friends and they were talking about killer bunnies. And he's like, the killer bunny can only be a killer bunny if it has sharp pointy teeth. <laughs> I he did my, the hand movements too. He did the hand movements. One of my most proud mom movement right there. And you're good. You just. I was so happy. You like, die, I, die I, right I there. was exploding with happiness, like heart swelling, like <laughs> just overflowing with my son is awesome. So, uh, mission accomplished. There you go. See? Oh, <laughs> parenting done. Parenting we can become done. nomads. <laughs> we walk a lonely road. <laughs> uh, but he really, yeah, he really enjoyed the movie. Yeah. Um, he, what did he, what did he say? He actually, uh, it was awesome. Said it was awesome. And I think he, uh, yeah, he, th- he thought Joan Sr. was very funny. Yeah. He really liked the comedy for that. And of course, then, as I say, he really liked the bridge for sure. He liked that the Grail was playing, um, but he did say it was a favorite of the series for him so far. So far, you know, and the surprise factor was he actually said that he liked Temple of Doom second. Yeah, I was surprised. Uh, We were were a little taken by that. Because we asked him, I was like, okay, it's okay that it is. But just on our notes, you said this was awesome. You said Raiders was really good. And you didn't say anything about how you really like Temple of Doom. So just clarifying. So I don't, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. His face, though, when Donovan aged was That's pretty fabulous. Awesome. That was pretty his cool. hands were up in his, in his mouth and he was just like all like sucked back into his chair. Like, oh, my God, yeah. I can't believe I'm watching something from the crypt happening right now. Uh, that always reminded me of Tales of the Crypt. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it's just a mummy skeleton thing, right? So, well, it's but that yeah. practical effect of it, too. Yeah, right? it was so. so awesome. But yeah, his face was great. So, it was a good experience. You know, the scene with the rats is terrifying and, and gross. And um, on reading on things about it, they actually were bred specifically for the movie to avoid any disease. Yeah, because you would not have been able to CG those in now, back then, right? No. Oh. No. <sighs> They're just so tons horrible. of rats. But what was awesome was I was, I was like, I was telling Katie, I was like, yeah, so these the rats are real. And then the flames came through and she was like, wait a minute. <laughs> they're like, no, no, no. If you look, they're not moving. They're rubber rats at this Because, I mean, I hate them, but I'm not all, I'm not okay with them burning a <laughs> tunnel of rats alive. 
for for some movie, movie right so it's not horrific it's so snowy. not okay and i was freaking out and i was like looking like okay you're right yeah they're not moving as soon as the fire showed up they're not moving yeah they're all oh. just the, the stereotypical rat worried. lump like the lego yeah bump yeah <laughs> yeah that was awesome yeah yeah and you know what i realize that it is just a fun movie you know um I still think Raiders is my favorite. I think I could watch Raiders this and then Temple of Doom. That's yeah. why I would rate them because for watchability wise and, you know, I, I think I definitely I've seen this one so much, but then I realize how much I really do mm-hmm. like Raiders and a little bit more of that classic. That, I think the thing that's cool about Raiders is it's sh- the shortest. Yeah. Right. And so it is just a fast paced movie. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's one of the things where like this here has its lulls because it adds in a little bit of the humor and heat in places. A little bit more of the backstory and the connection, yeah, the relationship yeah. and stuff like that. And yeah. But yeah, you can definitely see the humor in it. And that's what just boggles my mind when people complain about Marvel sometimes. Right. Yeah, it's just like, like it it's been doing it for years. You just haven't seen it. It's just because you don't maybe like the subject matter. Yes. Right. And that's or that thing. doesn't mean that it's a new concept. Yeah. Right. Do you have any favorite parts? I really do love the the solving the riddles for things and getting to the end there. Um, I like I like all of that. I like how it shows the greed of of Donovan and mm. how he gets immediate payback for that one. Yeah. Karma's a bitch. Um. And so I really, I really like that. I like the the old immortal knight. I mean, I feel bad for him. He gets still trapped there, but uh, you know, that much solitude. Well, and I he's, think collapse. He wouldn't be there anymore. Uh, no, he dead. Uh, true, he's dead. Um, but that much solitude, and he's not evil, which yeah. is, is showing the pureness of his spirit. Actually, when he was there, which mm-hmm. is impressive. So that was cool. what's going to suck is that you know his family members that went out to have family to be able to like replenish this bloodline that he talked about and all that they're gonna come back to this temple yeah after they're trained and they're gonna be like what happened yeah i know i've always thought of that too i'm like wow you guys just came in here and just destroyed shit like thousands of years of history gone. Right. okay awesome like what was your favorite part uh i i like once they find his dad and then oh, just all the scenes that lead up through that, like getting out of the, the Nazis and all that. It was mm-hmm. just funny, you know, and the, the chase from the motorcycle and all that. Like, it's just a fun scene. Like, yeah, it just it's kind of that. It's like the truck scene from Raiders. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. Never ending chases. Yeah. That was, was a chase day. movie. Yeah. It's always chase movies. Yeah. So. It's a chase. It's always a chase. Yeah. We have to chase right along because guess what? We're going to be chasing the Crystal Skull next week. Yeah. I don't have any other useless trivia for you. Um, on this one. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll find something for next week. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So thank you for joining us on uh, Indiana June. Yeah. Uh, and we'll come back next week because we'll be doing Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. It'll be a first time rewatching that in many many years. Yeah, I don't remember it really at, at all. all. So no, I'm excited. I remember that. Tarzan part, and that's about it. I just the moment I said that, her face dropped. Okay, so <laughs> it'll be interesting, but stick around. Uh, we got some more for you, some more dad movies, and uh, insane draggable Theo. He has uh, sent us another little uh, transition piece of him and his guitar. So here we go. Was Theo from Insane Dragon Ball uh, getting us to uh, Pokemon? Mm. 
so this <laughs> last week, uh, we uh, did dad movies. Yeah. Well, this one's not really a dad movie, but this one was um, something I watched. We did with- movies that dad wanted to watch. <laughs> that was the rule. Mike rules the choices. So you had a, you had an appointment. So you were gone for the day. Uh, so me and kiddo broke out where we would have usually done our segment on who's dead in Disney movies. <laughs> uh, we, we suspended that one for this week. We're going to start up again next week. Uh, but me and kiddo, we, uh, decided to watch turtles in time team NT three. Uh, and you're shaking your head. No. Yeah. We're good. Well, cause he, he doesn't really like the movies. Yeah. So it's taken me forever to get him to watch them. I know. Right. So whenever I like offer and he says yes, then I, I go because it's been like. It's been a long six, time. Six years. Well, been a, we've watched. I've tried it twice. Watching this series. And I've only ever got to the second one when we were down in the States. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time I've made it to the third one since we've been back in Canada. Yeah. So how do you think of this years. one? Uh, so. He was watching it and he was like, you know what? This movie is weird. <laughs> it's too goofy. And I don't understand it. It's so weird to think of him saying that. And he's like, nope. You know, like, I don't know how you like these movies. <laughs> it really ages them, apparently, then. Yeah, right. Uh, but you know what? I was watching it. And one thing I thought was hilarious while I was watching it is the turtles in T- Team NT3 are pretty much Ryan Reynolds really? in Deadpool. Michelangelo, his style of humor where he drops um, pop culture references and actor references mm-hmm. constantly is pretty much Deadpool. Weird. Yeah. I thought it was really strange because I felt like I was like, wait a minute. Why why are you suddenly dropping names? He just name drops. So Deadpool is modeled after Michelangelo. In T N T three, yeah. Wow. Well, that's what I'm going on. Yeah. That's where Ryan Reynolds got it from. He very well could have. He was watching it. And he was just like, yes, that's Deadpool. Yeah. That's yeah. how I'm going to do it to Deadpool. I think you should tweet. I don't know if asking <laughs> that specifically. <laughs> Yo, dude. No, he never gets back to people. I know. Except for when they're like. Famous. <laughs> ridiculous tweets. <laughs> but one thing I did like about Turtles in Time uh, that was not in Secret of the Ooze. Mm-hmm was the fact that the turtles actually use their weapons. Yeah. And, like, Leonardo is actually using his sword. they're actually ninjas? No, they're not ninjas. They're just weapons. They're using okay. their weapons, at least. Okay. But, like, he actually is sword, sword fighting. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool. Like, there was... Some, I think there were some better stunts in, in Turtles in Time mm-hmm. versus Secret of the Ooze. Uh, the costumes are crap because their heads are all squished and boxy because Jim Hansen didn't do the... Oh, yeah, they didn't do them, huh? And they, you know, suddenly got, like, all modeled and had, like, tons of spotting on them. (laughs) Uh, Makes sense. They look completely different. Right? But, um... But, yeah, you know, I I was watching it. I was like, yeah, it's goofy. It's weird. But it's one of those, like... It's still a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. You know, and... Yeah, I, I, I... I didn't find it nearly as appalling as Kiddo did. <laughs> well, you're probably more forgiving because it has a place in your heart from yeah. your childhood more too, yeah. right? And our youth. And but But the reality is is when I look at those and I realize and like everyone like has such a hard on for those movies. It really? is really why? Well the first one is good. It's dark, it's it's got the humor, blah blah. blah. It mm-hmm. follows the comic, you know. I get it. I do get it. Yeah. Right? But at the same time, you know, there is a bit of the the let go and realize that there needs to be more interpretations. And I hope they can. I hope they can re correct any of the issues that they had, especially well, after see, the Bay Turtles, right? Yeah, and I, that's my my biggest thing is I think that people hold on to that because they had a good idea because it was like it was something, and then they didn't get a good enough new reboot of things yeah so then they it's not enough to kick them off of that right and they need something to blow them out of the water and re- and correct and learn from the the mistakes yeah. of those things right yeah i really hope that they can do something i hope we actually get some ninja yeah ninja. I, I would like them to live up to their name and that's one thing i love about 2012 cartoon is they really feel like they embody 
mm-hmm. all of those characteristics. Yep. And I wish they could try to. They do were that teenagers, for a lot of they're time. mutants, and they were ninjas, and they were turtles. Yeah. So, and that's what it should be. I mean, it, you're literally describing them <laughs> in the name. I think, you know, you should build off of that. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, but, you know, I still had a lot of fun. It was fun to watch. And, like, this, the fact that they go back to, you know, Japan and they're, you know, seen as Kappas and yeah. they're evil and they've got to fight the... It's pretty know, funny. It's the Clint Eastwood, dude. Right? And, <laughs> you know... Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it's weird. Yeah. Um, but anyways, let's, let's roll <laughs> to something not as weird. We uh we watched you chose Hook to watch. Yeah, yeah. I picked out a few that I I was I picked out a whole bunch of Robin Williams movies, and then I realized they're all movies about absent fathers. Yeah, so I, there was a theme there, for sure. <laughs> so I was like, oh wow, wow. So uh, we picked out Hook this time around, another Spielberg movie. So it ties into our Indiana June in some right, form. There you go. Uh, so Hook is a retelling of the Peter Pan mythos. The idea that. Peter Pan grew up and forgot, and then his children get stolen by... Because Hope did not forget. Right? So. Steals his kids, and he's got to go back and learn how to learn how to fight, yeah. learn how to fly, learn how to crow. Yeah. So, uh, that was a favorite of my youth. I love that movie. I could watch like, it over and over again. I really love it's it. It's ridiculous, mm-hmm. you know, and it's... But it's fun. Like, it's... It is... It is... It is one of those ones that holds that special place, because it's just like... It's it's well it's heartwarming, the classic, right? It's the classic tale of a, an adult forgetting how to be innocent and childlike and have fun and use an imagination and get so caught up in the the stresses of adulthood yeah. that you even forget about your family and the, the importance of of being a, a child yeah. and what that means and being there for your and family. being there for them, right? Um, it's no different than Mary Poppins and all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. Where we we like that concept because as adults we do need to be reminded of that. Yeah, and that is is such a core story and it's a unique way of telling it. Mm-hmm. And as if Peter Pan was a real thing, and if you can believe in the magic of Peter Pan, the the idea that he chose at one point to grow up after decades kind of fits, right? Yeah, and. And how easy that world can get, can suck you away from it, right? Yeah. But it's interesting when he goes, does go back and he does remember, then he almost goes too much of an opposite. Mm-hmm. And it, then it shows the issue with it's Neverland. It's a midlife crisis, right? Yeah, it shows the issue with Neverland is that then you you have the children who are just pure children, and then the all the adults are pirates. They're all evil. Yeah. You know, so it's it's the little kid playing, and you see all adults as villains, and you can't have a happy medium, and that reminder that maybe on earth you could have that happy mm-hmm. meeting. You can still grow up, but still have that, that kindness and that play and the childlike quality. Right. So you can't beat that story. So. Yeah. I think you, you made a good point. This is probably a movie that scared me about wanting to get into business. Yeah. I've decided that these movies have just, yes, they tell you that it's important to be for your kid, but it also tells you that big business will suck your soul. So if you don't ever put yourself in that position, then you don't have to fight against Boom. It. I think it totally makes sense. Hippie on the beach. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's what you see it now as an adult. You're like, damn, I, I'm glad I didn't get into, you know, right? the corporate, you know, gear butt grinding. So well, who really wants to have a, a, you know, I'm surprised no one's made an app for your phone, for like a cowboy, like, because in that movie where they, they, they pretend that they've got their mm. cell phones or their guns, right? Yeah. Where's that app? Well, how quickly can they answer their phone? Because it was this new thing, right? right? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, so I was reading the fact that Spielberg actually didn't like this movie. Yeah. It's one of his least favorite movies he's ever made. Uh, and it was solely more on uh, Julia Roberts because she was going through stuff with her husband. They were divorcing and she ran away at one point mm-hmm. uh, during filming. And they almost recast because... Um, they were having to get her back. That's crazy. So that, that turmoil and all that. And it went out of budget and it wasn't seen critically. Right. It's one of those movies that gained steam over the years. Yeah. Right. Like it didn't sell the toys. It didn't sell the merch. It didn't hit the box office numbers. Um, it did, but it gained steam over the years from the group of kids that watched it like my age, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, 
after Williams passing, he apparently rewatched it because he still had a friendship with Williams. Um, and he was able to see a bit more of what the generation saw and admired mm. in it. Right. Was able to look past his own anger yeah. about the film and see more what the film itself yeah. gave. Yeah. My absolute favorite scene, and I still get choked up whenever I watch it, is when he first shows up and the Lost Boys are trying to look at him and they're uh, they're like, oh, you know, it's not your face or anything. And that little, little kid who's so innocent is is bent on trying to figure this out and he's molding his face and looking at all this. And, and when he finally makes him smile more, you know, he says, there you are, Peter. And I just, oh my gosh, it just yeah. gets to me every time because it's that, that concept that... It's so easy for us to just keep frowning. And if we just try to smile more, you know, it's still there. Yeah. And that that his eyes and the crinkle that's there and all that sort of stuff. And you just have to be willing to be patient and look for it. And that just gets me every time. It's my yeah. favorite part of the movie. So, yeah. You know, the movie itself is probably in my stable of what defined me as a, you know, there's lots of them we've talked about before. But like those movies that like made me wish I had made movies. Like yeah. when I look back at it and like mm. those are that made me interested in learning, like you've got, of course you get back to the future and who framed Roger rabbit and ghostbusters mm -hmm. and the hook is in there. Yeah. You know, um, especially the time frame Cause I was like, it was 91. So you were nine. nine. Ten. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. You know, that, that like, you know how fun it is when you look at it, especially when you see it through a child's eyes, the fact that, you know, you, you get to play like, mm -hmm. you know, as an adult, the idea where you can like battle pirates, you know, and there wasn't, it wasn't all serious and dark, Yeah, but there was that message. And, but yet again, it was the idea of myself being grown up without the, the, that close knit family, mm -hmm. right. Of wishing to see that maybe, maybe one of my parents would be like Peter Pan and come around and, and yeah. come back. Right. Like it's that hope, the hope that yeah. you get from it. Right. Yeah. So, I think they all did such a good job of playing their characters too. Hook is just, he's awesome in it. Dustin um, Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman did such a good job with him being like back and forth between like totally scary, but also really sad. And you he's, feel he's bad a little bipolar. Him. Yeah. Right. And he's, he's super depressed. He's more depressed, yeah. I guess. And cause he, cause of his suicidal tendencies. And, yeah. And, right. But like, you feel bad for him, but you also like, you know, you're horrible. Like, yeah, he was quoted as saying he wanted to play the role as an old drag queen. Yeah, and it it fits. And him and Smee were a couple, and that's how that, he's over dramatic. Yeah. and over the top. And think of like if, if this had been the Birdcage, the Nathan Lane's character. Yes, that's that's what he. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly, and um, yeah, Smee is just the. the it's so I love their dynamic. It was yeah. just so funny. And I and honestly, the story of him, you know, trying to win over the affection of Jack is perfect. That is, um, you know, it made sense. That was the thing that he hadn't tried for Peter and what yeah. would have fit at the time. And it showed then his ability to adapt for the current situation and still find a find a way. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I like when Peter gets his gets his power and finds his happy thought. And it's it's that. As a parent, it was an interesting to see that. And as a kid then, too, you mm -hmm. would have wanted... All you would have wanted was just have your parent see you as your happy thought, too, yeah. right? Yeah. So there is a lot of hope in there. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's just so so nicely done with it. Yeah. And I, I like that he's... Once he sees the depth of what Jack was able to be so easily turned away from him, mm -hmm. he he becomes... He has a drive, right? Yeah. And now, now he, he sees that there is something on the line. It matters yeah. more. And... Yeah, it's just such a good movie. Yeah. Kiddo was very emotional with seeing um, Hook take over Jack and mm -hmm. that connection and, and, and seeing all of that. He it really it affected him. Yeah. So he was very, very sad than how how he was able to to change him on that. So it was impressive to see. It's, I, I like the movies that kind of give him more of a reaction for mm -hmm. something um, because then it's a different way for him to see it's showing that he can empathize with the character and it shows them that they did a good job of portraying that as well in the movie. So, yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of humor too, then when it comes to, oh, it, yeah. that was the thing he really liked was the final battle with all the yeah. little things. Like the, he loved when they were all suiting up for armor and they would just run through the curtains. Right. That was hilarious. That's what I always wanted. I always wish you could just run through your blinds. Right. And, and that just seems got armor. that's perfect. to The little kid thing. I'm yeah. just going to run and I'm just going to be magically in armor. Like, yeah, yeah that's bad. Fantastic. So, uh, 
Yeah, those are hilarious. I'm hanging up some sheets. I'm going to try that tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Uh-huh. Roger Rabbit it right through right. the, the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> that was one thing that was cool with uh, that prop culture. I talked about that scene. Yeah. Where he goes yeah, through. Yeah, I, I love to, that. Like, cut every single piece and then have them all on string so they could pull it out at the time the glass blew. You know, it's so funny because you look at that and you're like, that can't be that hard. And then you talk about it. Oh, my God. It's so much harder than you possibly right. can even well, to imagine. To get it the cartoony, if you just want to blow it up, then yeah. you're fine. But to have right? that perfect laser cut yeah. around it. And then it's not just here's this blind sitting there for you to look at afterwards. Mm-hmm. It's It has to actually change in the filming. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to go from solid to cut. Cut and it has through to glass, like, right? Yeah. And have the glass shape as well, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Super impressive. But... Uh, but no, no, Hook, Hook's a fantastic movie. Like, I know I know it gets a little ragged on for its age and all that, but it's still just really fun. Like, Ron, we, Ron Williams to me is was just one of those comedians that spoke to me. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it was always... I love him in everything. Yeah, and he was always like the guy that, you know, I just wish I had as a dad. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. Because everything he plays, it was just it's fun, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It was just, yeah... I think that's what he was it. for a lot of people, honestly, mm-hmm. because it showed then how how much he spoke to so many people. And yeah. Well, then you look at the fact of how many movies that I pulled out that all were the idea of the absentee father. Right? Yeah. So it shows that that concept spoke to him as well. Then, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. That that idea somewhere, you know, I, I don't I'm not going to pretend like I know too much about his, his past mm. but even even if he felt like he needed to help people in that situation yeah. it still spoke to him as a yeah. story to tell right so but yeah so we watched more robin williams absentee father just robin williams movies. robin williams well it almost became that we almost we we looked at popeye and we looked at mrs doubtfire you know one thing that's not it's much more serious i haven't seen for a really long time I used to watch all the time that i love is dead poet society i don't know how you could watch that all the time i watched it so much as you a can teenager, tell it's like the moody teenager. It, it was totally a moody teenager, and I haven't watched it for a really long time. Huh. I don't. I can't imagine watching it over and over again now. Hmm. But I really want to watch it again because it's been so very long. Okay, well, maybe we just need to do an entire Robin Williams. Yeah, I think so. So there you go. So, yeah, and now I, I just always, want to watch Birdcage because that Bird movie Cage, is fabulous. Um, <laughs> Good Morning Vietnam. Yeah, you know, like good stuff. Okay, there we go. Lot, There's the next. Movies. Add that to the, the to do list for our months of movies that we have going on. <laughs> okay, so we had started Hook earlier, so we had time. So you and me decided to watch another movie. Yeah, and and I didn't know what to put on. We thought we'd go for a comedy. Yeah, I figured I needed something. It was like it's something a little shorter, something that's funny, you know. Yeah. Like, and I was like flipping through, and I was like. I just wasn't sure. And I was like, you know what? One that you keep saying you've never seen and it's been sitting on our Netflix list for like the longest time was coming to America. Yeah. And I was honestly surprised you hadn't seen it because being that it was like a romantic comedy and all that, that you know, but so. I didn't know it was a romantic comedy. I, 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 I don't. It's a full on rom-com. Oh, it totally is. Yeah. Like, and I loved it. <laughs> it was hilarious. And it's a good rom-com. Yeah. Like, if you like, you know, it's not It's a not all drawn one. out yeah. and ridiculous. Like, I am super impressed. It was so much fun being like, is that Eddie Murphy? Is that Arsenio Hall? Right. Like, wait, that guy looks familiar. It's one of them, isn't yeah, it? They all play multiple characters within and, the movie. You know, that that's something that it isn't really done that often. You know, I wonder if he burnt everybody out with the clumps. Yeah. Because he just went crazy with it then. Yeah. But it's not done that often nope. anymore. And it's an interesting thing. You and know? then there's not a lot that really did it. Him and Mike Myers, about the, the only two that really, when yeah. you think about it, did the multi role. Like, and I've always, uh, always associated Eddie Murphy with that, like, because yeah. of it. But I know the clumps got super burned out. I mean, you make a movie with yourself, you do, essentially. Like, three of them? Yeah, it was I so overdone. I love The Night but, Professor. I, his version of The Night Professor was oh, hilarious. Yeah. The other one's not so much. But, yeah. But, yeah, but, like, the fact that he plays, he plays the prince. He mm-hmm. plays... Uh, the the Bar- one of the main barbers. barbers. He mm-hmm. plays uh, the uh, old dude that p- is in the barber shop. That's mm-hmm. not a. It's just there. Like yeah. he, every barber shop, there's always just someone. Just one there. random person. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't leave. And then he played the singer. Yeah. Right? So. And then Arsenio played another barber, and he played the, the reverend. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he played anyone else. No, it might have been the side. Yeah. Side. Um, 
but yeah, it's such a it's such a, f- a good movie because it it's so funny to see how like prim and proper they are at the beginning and like what a good person mm-hmm. he really is and that he he wants to just he doesn't have any crazy plans. He wants to legitimately go out there and he's just so happy to be in New York in this shitty part of town and doing what we look as grunt work. But it's so exciting for him because he's this is done. nothing. This is totally different. For yeah. Him. So to him, it's exciting and it's ex- to do something for himself. And yeah. and he's just so happy. And it's, it's really an uplifting movie. It really yeah, is. Like, like it makes you want to be like more OK with. Just dealing with that menial stuff yeah. because it, to him, it was a blessing to be able to do something on his own. Yeah. And to look at that and there is something to it, not just having everything given to you. You know, right. I mean, he had everything at his disposal. I'd and, like to wipe my own ass. Right. Well, when it first started, I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Like there's people for everything. Right. Couldn't really the brushing is his teeth. It took like five people <laughs> just because he couldn't even touch the cup himself. Right. Like. So funny. Okay, the bathing, the bathing I like. Yeah. <laughs> that I can deal with. <laughs> the royal penis is clean. <laughs> it's just like, oh goodness. <laughs> I love that because like that's how the movie started, and you were just like, "What are we watching?" Yeah, a little bit. Like, okay, um, interesting. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I I really enjoyed it, yeah. and I'm really glad that scumbag, you know guy that she was dating um so glue is gone oh that guy was horrible mm-hmm. so horrible just just the, the the whole donation the rally thing that they were at and mm-hmm. him you know his look on his face and and the uh trying to take take a claim to the money that was in there and everything i was like yeah. oh, you were just a sleaze bag yeah so um but yeah thank yeah. you for sharing you know the real reason we watched it was because it was like it was Samuel Jackson movie. Totally. Yeah. He walks in. I'm like, dude, dude. Is this him? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only reason why we watched it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So this is just a Samuel Jackson movie. We yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. this is like first credited role. Yeah. Yeah. So. He kind of, he looked like a slimy version of what he did in Die Hard. So that's what well, about the time frame for it. Not too no. Far off. No, it was the 80s. It was too early for that. But, but yeah, that was before he was really big. Right. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now I'm happy that I've finally been able to watch this and I'm very happy that I did. So it's good stuff. And then, but James Earl Jones is so weird to watch now because it goes back and forth between Vader and Mufasa (laughs) and then being all kingly. I'm like, all I can hear is Mufasa. And that just gives it a whole nother feeling. Like, like I can't focus on anything else. Like that is See, See, here's a thought. Maybe this is just the sequel, a sequel to The Lion King. Yeah. And what happened was Simba came over to America in a circus to find a bride. (laughs) Now watch coming to America and imagine they were all lions. That's what they need to do. They need to remake the whole lion version of coming to America (laughs) in the hyper realistic style. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Huh. That's something that you want to go find on Netflix and then just imagine. Use whatever you need to use to imagine it. (laughs) Your own imagination or whatever. (laughs) And imagine them lines. Puppets. Puppets work. You know. I like it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So that's that's all I could think of was Mufasa. (laughs) So I, it's a fun movie. I like I, I it's one of those ones where like it's it's probably one of my favorite Eddie Murphy movies. Yeah, that and Beverly Hills Cop because he's just so happy, like yeah. super, just oh, he was just adorably happy. Yeah, so like, yeah, Beverly Hills Cop and and um, Coming to America are probably my two favorite yeah. of his. He gets so washed under because of the Nighty Professor and um, Shrek. That mm. I think a lot of people forget that he had other movies. Yeah. It was, he, he was someone before that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before he did all the family stuff, right? Like yeah. Dr. Doolittle and daddy daycare. And yeah. So yeah. Would you recommend it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. It was, it was just a feel good, fun slice of life moment from back then. Like it was, it was awesome to see. So you go, go watch coming to America. And imagine the lions. <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> so, uh, we, uh, 
We tried something new. We watched uh, the final dad movie. Yeah. I put this in a dad movie. It just feels like a dad movie. It's not. It's just a movie that dad likes. No, 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 no. But you think about it. It is a dad movie. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. It is, I guess. Right. And, but just kind of, but even just the subject matter, like you just, you, you, I think in this movie, even though I, I enjoy it, I think of it one of those movies where you just find your dad watching on a Saturday afternoon and being like, guys, guys, come watch this movie. Mm. And it's like five hours long now because there's commercials, mm-hmm. and it, but it's just it's on some it's on like FX or something, and you're just like it, I can't stop watching. It. Yeah, yeah, okay, right. But then you lose everything, and you're like, no, we own it. Like just just watch. Just here's the disc. Watch it. Like we've never experienced that with you know and dads in our life at all. <laughs> no, no, no. I gotta watch it on TV, and but I don't know what's going on anymore because there's all these commercials. <laughs> I can't remember if the toothpaste is part of the show or if it is a commercial. It's a it's a commercial. Anyways. Uh, we watched Inception for the first time in like 10 years. Yeah. It's been a it's long time. It's 10 years old. So it's the first time in like nine years, I guess. Yeah. So. Wow, I forgot how long it's been since we watched our... Uh, so you, so Tenet was supposed to come out on the actual 10th anniversary yeah. of the release of um, Inception. Damn you, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so the, we, just, brought, we brought Kiddo along. Yeah, side. well, you know, I was like, I was like looking and I was like, it's rated PG. I was mm-hmm. going through the stuff. I was like, it's rated PG. There is no F-bombs. Yeah. There is no blood. There is violence, but... But it was a true PG movie, felt it, like. Yeah. yeah. I was, you know, I was looking at it, I was like, there's nothing in here that is there's actually... There's no sex, there yeah. wasn't, yeah. It's tamer than an X-Men movie. Yep. Weird to say, right? Yeah. So First I was only movie. really concerned about the, like, the drama and the concept for it, right? So we're like, well, we're just going to go with it and not... He, we showed him the trailer and he's like, I want to watch this because it looks trippy. Yes. So. So, yeah, it... Uh, we uh, brought him along on the Inception ride. We did. So uh, Christopher Nolan is one of his, one of the few of his that is original material. Yeah. Most of his stuff is has been adapted from things, um, but this is solely his story. Uh, to the point of that he didn't have a second unit director on the film. It's just him and his cinematographer through the whole thing. Yeah, that's really impressive. So that's how much, you know, he put into this movie. Mm-hmm. Um it's yeah it, it's a trip right so it sounded like it was started as military aspect right to, mm-hmm. to dream share and the to the, feel and the, to understand what yeah it and to be like. able to train right yeah. because then you can actually sounds bad but you can actually train and kill someone and have that same gut feeling of what it would be like to take someone's life but yeah. you're not actually injuring someone in real life yeah and uh, so it's a like really intense vr feeling yeah and so then the the concept of, of you know, sharing and, and then they started using it as an extraction extraction. You can go in and you can take thoughts from people's minds, you know, things that they would hide in. And it's a whole nother world inside someone's dreamscape. Uh, and then the the concept of inception is implanting an idea into someone's mind. But the the tricky thing, of course, is that. You have to make sure that it feels organic to them because like, I like we're how the he, best podcast in the world. I know. Right. Uh, I like how he pointed out, <laughs> that, um, you know, if you if you someone tells you information, yes, now that information is in your brain, but you know that someone else told it to you. Because if you shared this with someone else, you, they'd really like it. And if you how do you make it to feel like your brain actually had the the concept and the inspiration to think of something all on your own. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and the, this in depth, how the mind would work and treating it almost like, you know, the, the immune system response and how it can be so complex and so easy to trick, but also really difficult to trick all at the same time in the complexities of the mind. Yeah. And it's just, oh, I love it so much. I, yeah, I don't want to get political and all that, but Trump incepted America. Yeah, no, it's it flat out. And like it tells I, you I in that. We're like, oh I was goodness. watching it. I was like, damn, the danger of an idea. You put a tiny, tiny seed in there, and yeah. they think it's theirs, and it just grows out of proportion, and it literally is 
describing what has happened in America. Right? Right now. This is America. This is America. <laughs> it has been incepted. <laughs> like, that's terrifying. Like, who messed up and planted some idea and it got out of hand? Right? Yep. Like, that. that is crazy. Yep. Crazy to think of. So. You know? Um... But yeah, no, it, it is because it is true. It's like you think of anything, though. And mm-hmm. that's the thing is like the more I, the more I've learned mm-hmm. and the older I've gotten, I have been able to see the film in a different way, too. Right. Yeah. And the idea and the realization that there is a lot of mental health issues that he's actually portraying, but he's, so he's many. doing it in a way that it's it's science fiction. Yeah. And and the the addiction, well, yeah, and the drug addiction. The, yeah, what we we looked at it afterwards, and more is even yeah that the substance abuse concept, mm-hmm. and because he talks about the fact that the more you do it, the less you can dream naturally, and it's that the cycle of having to come back, and you've changed your brain chemistry and your body chemistry, and, and it can no longer it, function it. as it normally would yeah. and naturally would, and now you need to to inject a. Uh, unnatural substance in order to mm-hmm. get that same response. Well, just just and, with even and how you get lost in it. Fact of with her with bringing yeah. bringing her in and being like, well, she'll be back for more. Yeah, it's like more and more levels of the idea that it is the addiction. It's an addiction, right? Yeah. And well, we crave control. We crave mm-hmm. the ability to um, to create in in a rule without the boundaries. Yeah, and if you're given that that place, how addicting it can be, and that's what he had experienced. It's addicting to be able to have control over something, mm-hmm. and you know, and it's. Well, it sounds funny, but it's no different than me, you know, getting intensely addicted to my Sims even Mm -hmm. is there's there's a world where I can create that I don't have the same rules as the real world. So I have control, you know, that that concept for humanity to have control over something is addicting. Right. Um, And yeah, it has so many different levels on what we can deal with. Yeah. Between between mental health and trauma. And, you know, for him having that trying to suppress a trauma that you haven't dealt with and how it can eat you up and starts affecting other people in your life. And you put other people in danger without even meaning to, without realizing it. And if you never deal with it, it just grows and grows and grows in its power. And it makes things dangerous. And yeah, you know, like that was a thing with haunting your past from your past. You know, the fact that she literally is like a ghost to him and how it affects him. And you know, it's, it's It's the guilt that's there. Yeah. And, and all of that. Right. And it's just interesting to see just through that different lens of everything and being like, well, you know, how much more layer the movie is like the one article I was reading was basically Christopher Nolan is a psychologist disguised as a director. Yeah. Right. So that's also I want to go back and look at his films now and see what other things are woven within them that Mm -hmm. possibly missed before. Yeah. Um, You know, because it is interesting to see. He seems like he he appreciates a lot of the human mind and what it is capable of doing. And I wonder if um, his understanding of more of that plays even more because I know he feels he was so badly um, disturbed by Heath Ledger's death. Mm. If his understanding of so much of that makes it even harder for him when that happened yeah. to someone so close with him. Um, and, you know, well, it changed the third one. He, he, yeah. basically, he said, this is not the movie I was set out to make. Yeah. So it's like, it would have impacted it. Did it impact him even more because yeah. he, he probably well, you noticed too that all his films since have been more existential. Yeah. More stellar. You know, yeah. Like, except for Dunkirk. Turn was pretty standard. Yeah. Um, so just he seems like he really knows about that, right? Yeah. So, and, and cares about trying to you know, it. I look at Nolan more as a modern Hitchcock. Mm. And which is funny because a lot of people are like, well, why would you say that? Well, because Hitchcock wasn't technically horror. Yes, he was the father of modern because of Psycho uh, but you look at his films North by Northwest and Vertigo and all those they're all, they're all psychological thrillers yeah and that's why I look at Nolan is that you know yeah it makes he, sense he, all his films are psychological thrillers yeah at the core well Even but Hitchcock Batman, right 
Hitchcock that yeah he's known for Psycho but that's still a psychological thriller just happens to have murder in it yeah and, and at the time that was horrific right, right? and but I remember now when I'm like, like oh let's watch film. more Hitchcock, Hitchcock movies and I was expecting Psycho and I watched The Birds or North by Northwest I'm like what the hell is this <laughs> like this isn't the same thing so um, where's my strings and the ominous music right and so yeah window, it's, it's definitely right? interesting yeah to look at that type of stuff right yeah. and the, there's so much it's more of like a Twilight Zone feel right yeah than anything so yeah uh, that's where I put him I put, he's definitely kind of like that modern mm-hmm. you know where it's it's like the, those those really thought provoking thrillers that are they're like onions yeah so many layers right like I really <laughs> like this movie like I remember liking it but I, I like it even more because... like it gets made fun of a lot because a lot of people will, like even like Rick and Morty they make fun of it right yeah. like people that like Inception like you know what it is but but yeah that idea, especially with looking at it with the stuff that I've learned in this last year about mental illness and mm-hmm. drug addiction and all those. And I was like looking at it like that and I was just like, whoa. Well, cause like, and like I almost even wasn't even watching the rest of the movie anymore or what was actually happening. I was like, into the, I was digging into the, the meaning, the, the meaning of it. The right? of it yeah. And the fact that like, I, I totally forgot what I was really watching yeah. and seeing it and being like, you know, this is something where you could easily watch in a class yeah. And be like, hey. And let's discuss it now. Let's discuss about, like, what is he feeling in this scene? Like, why is it that we're going into these different levels mm-hmm. to, you know, of his psychosis? And what does this mean? And what, like, where does this go like, yeah. for his addiction? Well, and it's, it's that idea that the concept of traveling through dreams is super science fiction for mm. sure that's not what i'm enjoying about this movie it's yeah. not like oh that'd be great to be able to hop into someone's mind and everything like that like yeah we that's are right now that's super <laughs> science fiction fun but there yeah there I, I like the movie more for what it's trying to portray as as feelings and what we would do in a situation given that you yeah know, so like going to your friend and saying hey have you listened to cup of rad i know it's a great podcast you really should do it it's gonna save the world just like that yeah yeah, yeah right. like you know it's all your own thought i mean <laughs> so i know we, we've obviously i mean we've talked so much about this so are we okay to spoil this well yeah it's 10 years old good i just thought i'd just well, double check <laughs> sometimes you know we kind of haven't been talking about it um so one thing that was really awesome is you know kiddo for when it first started he didn't quite know what was going on because quite honestly he doesn't understand you know extradition and words like that he didn't understand that concept of how he kind of got from you know getting the backstory of where he was and mm-hmm. what he was doing so we kind of caught him up to that and once the story got going in the groups of people who then he was like okay he he understood what was happening in the moment um and the different things that they were playing and he he could see that kind of fill out well at the end of it we i asked him you know we asked him what what do you think happened right and i was really happy to see that he could remember what the token was supposed to be and what what he had said about it in the movie and what it what it implement what what it was possibly portraying Mm -hmm. with it wavering um and it, just from that, he was like, I don't think that was real. Yeah. And I was really happy to see that he understood that concept, that it wasn't like, well, I don't know what happened. He looked, everything was a happy and wonderful. He actually used the context, the clues, and didn't just assume that everything turned out good because that was how it was supposed to be. Yeah. You know? Uh, and that well, then, really then happy we were able to, to talk and be like, hey, here's the other clues. The fact yeah. that the children aren't any older. The, they look the exact the, same. They're in the same clothes. They're in the same, same pose. pose. You know, all, all the that. change was that they turned around. Yeah. And then you put all those clues together and it was like, oh, wow. You know? Yeah. And uh, all yeah, the clues the, are there. And it's a, it's the idea. And this is where the, the idea of it being about addiction mm-hmm. um, for a substance makes it even more is the fact that it's just that idea that he got to that place and he couldn't handle it anymore Mm -hmm. so he just got lost in his addiction yeah right it's not that he stayed in his dream he just he's pumping himself full of whatever crap is getting him high yeah and that's how it ends yeah like that's how it's twisted yeah is that idea that it's not you know yeah it's not necessarily it's his dreamscape yes but it's it's the idea that He's having to basically kill himself Mm -hmm. to feel that finally after dealing with the fact that his wife died. Yeah. Well, because he right. feels so much guilt and it was, yeah. he just, it, that, well, we also, even the substance abuse, the concept of, you know, you have 
you have a couple, let's say, that are both experiencing a substance abuse and you have one that's trying so desperately to get out of it and they get just enough out. They try to pull the other one out and then you can spiral back down together Mm -hmm. because, you know, unless you you can co, you know, together as a group, get out of that and how easy it is to give in to to that issue well, and that's to pull not... him back in right yeah. it was basically that's a that's it she couldn't he accepted let her yes he he wanted to get sober yeah so he pulled her out but she didn't she want, couldn't handle it she didn't want to let go of the of it yeah because she was so broken from what she had done she kills herself yeah to try to free herself of that right then he allows him to continuously find ways to slip back into his abuse. Yes, exactly. Because he's then he starts creating the world around him to fit as if he has to go back and mm-hmm. do it because I'm good at it or I need to save this or I need yeah. to help this person, right? And so, yeah, there's so much there. So much there. It was such a good movie. And yeah, I'm really happy. And I'm happy we were able to share it with kiddo. That a higher yeah. level of something, and it was really fun action too. You know, it's got watching some of those like it's interesting. He loves the anti gravity concept. Yeah. That was one of his favorite scenes, and understandably, it was fun fun to look at. Right. Well, it's so trippy because you're watching it through di- watching it through different levels, right? You, yeah. You, you got what's happening in the van, which is then affecting what's happening in the hotel, which, which is, is creating the the, the anti gravity. Right. And then you're having the avalanches in the snow yeah. because of what's happening in the anti gravity. So, like, he, he definitely got a kick of that. And he loves seeing, like, the, the, the room spinning and all that. Yeah. And what's trippy about those scenes is that those tre- scenes are all practical. Mm-hmm. They're using those rotating rooms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? So that they're actually, like, tumbling around that's really cool. in them. That's, I like that you know, he ties the group of people together. Right. Uh, that's really, really fun. It shows how quick he has to think on his feet for it, right? But Kiddo was just, like, freaking out with the time. You get closer to the river, and he's just like, ah, are they going to make it? <laughs> yeah, he was, it was pretty intense for him, and he, yeah. he liked it, and he talked about it, and which was really cool um, to see. You know, it's fun to be able to share once in a while. You share the silly things, but then you can share something a little deeper. Yeah. And see, you're, you're testing their, their cognitive yeah. development. And right? as I say, you know, see him being able to formulate his own idea with what happened, it wasn't like, so did you catch the fact that he probably didn't wake up? No, you know, he, he flat out said it and he gave me the reasons why. I'm yeah. like, yes, this is this is helpful. That's, see, that's the, the idea of like not shocking a system with something that's too horrific or grotesque. So you're looking at something that can maybe kind of like broaden their their thought process yeah right well he's seeing a different art medium he's seeing a different way of something Mm -hmm. a thought being portrayed and i think that's really helpful for critical thinking is because people in general we express feelings and thoughts in different ways and that's the whole point of art yeah and so if you can find a different way for him to get an emotional response or an understanding of an idea through a different thought than he would have possibly considered you know, power to it, right? Yeah, and so. just teach it. It's the idea too, teaching that, you know, maybe your thoughts aren't wrong. Yeah. You know, maybe this is what you got out of it. Yeah. Unless you're like completely like not understanding it. I yeah. Guess. But but then at least if, even if you a can discussion. give me, yeah, a discussion right? about it, right? If he saw that, maybe he saw something that we never thought of. Mm-hmm. You never know, right? So, yeah. so. Uh, so that has been a fun experience. It was really cool to see. I, I am curious to watch some more of Nolan's movies. It's been a while since we've watched some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely want to check out those. I know Kiddo's been asking to watch the Batman trilogy. I'm excited to watch so that again. I think we'll be dipping into that um, for sure. We're tossing up couple different ideas for lord of the rings is happening in the summer yeah i don't know because otherwise you're gonna have to wait a whole nother year and that would just be crazy crazy (laughs) maybe instead of christmas movies it'll be lord of the rings movies where are the birds (laughs) or the crickets sorry i don't know what i was thinking birds hitchcock (laughs) hitchcock but yeah, no, no, it was good. It was like, I really do like the movie and um, it'll be interesting to see what else we can bring to the, to kind of like, you know, we've shown them some irrelevant comedies and yeah, and it's all a matter of balance, right? As a parent, it's a balancing act of finding what is going to be okay for them to watch and look, looking at the different parental controls and all that to see where you're at with, yeah. with things. I was really surprised to see that it was so tame. Well, honestly, then, you know, you, we look at a PG 
movie now and it is so much higher allowed so some of those older pg movies might be the better way to go sometimes yeah you know so what's interesting is is it because okay so hamilton is coming to disney plus Mm -hmm. and um there is a lot of like what how is this possible because there is some explicitness to it and all Mm. that and so he had said lin-manuel oh yeah he had said uh it's pg-13 mm-hmm um, and there's only two F bombs removed. Oh, okay. That's how they got the PG 13 rating to put mm. on plus. Oh, okay. It comes out on July 3rd. Okay. Um, so I'm excited to watch that. Yeah. Uh, but there's people actually like, were kind of frustrated with that and mad. And he's like, no, I wanted to, the kids could see it. And this is the deal we made. Yeah. Cause as the MPA says, one F bomb is okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's like, and the ones I picked out were ones that already kind of blended a little bit. So they're not as noticeable. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool to see. Like it's the idea where you've got the actual creator of the show saying, Hey, you know, but there's that. Like, well, he probably assumes that it's important to share with younger audiences right now. This is a way that they can do it. Mm-hmm. That maybe they wouldn't have brought their child to the actual show, but now you can try to express it and and share it with them at home. Exactly. And why not do that? You know, like is your because I'm sorry if your world is rocked that you didn't hear two f bombs <laughs> in something. Something is wrong. <laughs> You know, I don't watch things just for the language. Of right. It. And I swear a lot, but I'm OK with something not having swearing in it. Yeah. It's not it shouldn't make or break it. Yeah. You know, so that's that's the thing that's kind of interesting to see that like that, you know, it's it's how do you get this stuff out to the masses? How, how are you able to, you know, yeah, you got to censor something sometimes when you, you want to kind of keep, you know, an innocence yeah. to the world at the yeah. same time because we can't always just allow our kids to be uh, embracing with the harshness of it because the world is cruel and well, as I dark. Say, he's probably and, trying to share that's an important and that's what he said he wanted to, he wanted it to get it out to the kids yeah. right so that so let's more be, people can see it right that's important right now you know so positive information for things like. exactly so uh but we had a fun week yeah you know it was really really interesting a little a lot of different movies yeah all over the place <laughs> uh but uh next week is gonna be we Indiana don't know Jones, about yet <laughs> part four plus something else crystal skull <laughs> we'll see where we go you know it's yeah. it's a uh, lots of things out there so yeah, yeah. Um, i got nothing else i'm, I'm, no, I'm we're good out of coffee so i'm, I'm out yeah i'm out mic dropped <laughs> you know so stay rad Thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening. Want more rad content? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. And remember, be excellent to each other, and party on, dudes!